Now, once again, Merry Christmas to all of you in, in advance. You know that this, by saying Merry Christmas, is also a battlefield in the U.S. alone. There are many places that do not even allow to say Merry Christmas. But we thank God during the time of Trump, he tried to restore that. And there are certain places they do not allow people to decorate even the Christmas tree, unlike before. So we can see that the hostility, hostility and the rejection of the gospel becomes stronger. But in those opposition, God always make a way. And it's also a sign that we are going to see a great, great revival is coming back once again. In Jesus' name, Amen. And uh, we'd like once again welcome all of you to Global Mission Vision Fellowship. And if you are nearby in Orange County, we'd like to invite you to come and join together with us in person at A461 Garden Grove Boulevard, Garden Grove City, California. So just come and join together with us here uh, on every Friday night at 6 p 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And this is also a house of prayer, so we are looking for the team that can serve together with us for every evening. So if you are the worship team, you are the prayer team, please come and serve together with us. And today I would like to share together with you about the second message for this Christmas. Last night I was sharing to you that Jesus Christ is our Christmas special gift. Right? And I have been sharing together with you that when we celebrate birthday, what are the important things for the celebration? It's not only just about food, right? But imagine a celebration is without the celebrant. A celebration without the celebrants, the one that we're going to celebrate birthday, and that one, he or she, is not there. How are we going to celebrate? And in the same way, if we are going to celebrate Christmas, we must have that celebrants. And that celebrants is the Lord Jesus himself for our life, in Jesus' name. Because without him, the celebration becomes meaningless. And the second thing is also very important is that the celebration is always important with the gifts. I just could imagine if I'm going to celebrate birthday and then we have no gift. At least we have a birthday cake. It's make the celebration become more joyful, isn't it? And in the, same, in the same way, Jesus is our special gift for this Christmas. And with that special gift, it's just like we have abundant fellowship, we have the celebration, we have the joy, we have the laughter, we have the food. When you have Jesus, you have everything for you and your life and your family and that's the first message that i shared last night and today let us go to a series of the prophecy and proclamation of the angels and what does that mean with the presence of the angels and we are going to go to each of hands but i'm going to go very quickly about three things today and we are going to draw the lesson from that one so let us just open together in the book of Luke chapter 1 from verse 26. Luke chapter 1 from verse 26. And we are going to read together the first, one of the first record here in the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. And if you and I read a little bit earlier, you see that in the book Luke chapter 1, that the, the angel already appeared to Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we are going to see the link that, that on this Christmas season, let us, we, let us begin to discover about three important things about the appearance of the angel. The first one is that before the birth of Jesus, okay? The appearance of the angel is before Jesus was born, the angel came and said something, proclaimed something, announced something. And what is this about? So, to a virgin pledges to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, the virgin's, virgin's name was Mary. Now, the angel said, the angel went to her and said, Greeting you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. 
Now, Catholic friends, please pay attention. The greeting of the angel is that you are highly favored. It's just like Joseph was highly favored. You and I are also being favored and used by God, but not to worship Mary. Okay? So don't twist and turn the word of the Lord. And many times that many people do not understand and just thought, oh, she's highly favored, so she can, we can even pray to her. No, that is a, a different interpretation. And this is what the, the angel said. She is highly favored because she is used by God. She is called by God. She is blessed by God. Just like you and I being used by God, blessed by God, and called by God. And of course, every one of us have different gifting and ability, and God calls us into different ministry. But all of us are called and being blessed by the Lord most time. The Lord is with you, just as the Lord is with Mary, and the Lord is also with you and with me and with every one of us. Okay. Mary was really troubled at His word and wonder what kind of greeting this might be. Now, this is one of the accounts that we see that before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the angel appeared. And the angel appeared in order to tell Mary that she should not be afraid of the things that was going to happen to her. And this is what the angel continued to say. Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. And you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendant forever, and his kingdom will never end. This is not, this is not about Mary. This is about Jesus. Let's remember this. That the angel was talking about Jesus. That he will be great and he will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendant forever. And his kingdom will never end. And Mary was puzzled and she began to ask, How could this be? I'm still a virgin. I'm not married yet. I may have a date, but not yet. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her own age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail and I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Even Mary declared that she is the Lord's servant. She is no way to be equal with God or to be prayed to or to be worshipped to. But this what we come back, the important point is here. The angel appeared. And begin, the angel began to tell what is going to happen. And we talk about the name of Jesus, his function, his ministry. And that's it, one of the first things. And in this case, we also see about Elizabeth. And why? Also, I can mention about Elizabeth. You know why? Because Mary was troubled. Mary was not sure if it, this is going to be from the Lord or if it is going to be happen. So God had to make the preparation six months earlier and tell Mary that Elizabeth's pregnancy is one of the confirmation of the Lord for her and calling her. So you see that God already had his plan in advance before the angel appeared to Mary and tell her. And that's why we see in the scripture, that was the reason why Mary immediately ran to her cousin home to discover. Is that the truth? And of course we know it was the truth. It happened at the angel's set. So we see that in the first account, before the birth of Jesus, the angel appeared. And next week, I'm going to go to each point. So do not be worried. Today, I'm just giving you an, uh, another in, uh, an introduction only. Before his birth, the angel appeared. And the angel appeared not only to Mary, but the angel also appeared to Elizabeth. 
And then we're also going to see that even the angel appeared to Joseph as well. So we see that the angel appeared to so many people. Now we see another account in Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to 25. And this is how we are going to see that how the angel appeared to Joseph. Not only to Zechariah, not only to Mary, but also to Joseph as well. In Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother was blessed to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But as he had that mindset, as he had that plan, now the angel appeared to him. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to confuse what the Lord had said through the prophet. And the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So those are the account before the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Of course, we have many other prophecies, but this is not the focus of my sharing today. And we are going to see the message by next week, not today. The second point that we are going to see is that not only angel appear before the Lord Jesus was born, but at His birth, the angel also appeared. Are you curious a little bit why the angel appeared? Why the angel didn't appear to me before his birth? And now at his birth, in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Because of Jesus now, even the shepherd could also have an encounter with the Lord Jesus. How precious is he? And in the same way, when you are in the presence of God, the angel of God also surrounding us and worshiping together with us. And that is a great privilege for every one of us. Not only that, we also have the presence of the Holy Spirit be with us. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Do not be terrified. But let allow the radiance of God, the presence of God, the glory of God, continue to reveal through our life. Amen. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and He is the Messiah, the Lord. Amen. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a mansion. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, What do they say? Just imagine a multitude, a, multitude, a great company of the heavenly hosts or the angel. They appear and they sing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those who on whom his favor rests. And when the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened and which the Lord has told us about. Because we know the story, they went there and they found baby Jesus. And they also worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. Who else? At the present, at the birth of Jesus, beside the shepherd, who else was there? The wise man. 
and they come all the way from the east. It took them many months, and they saw that the star appear on the sky. And they based on the prophecy, and they know that the Savior was born. It would be the time for the Savior was born. So in this story, as you know, that at his birth, we we'll see also in Matthew chapter 2, we are going to see even the wise men also came from afar and adored him. And I'm not sure if the angel appeared to the wise men. I don't know. I have to reveal to them something. But at least they know that Jesus was about to be born. Looking from the sky, from the prediction, from the, uh, from the prophecy that they have studied for years. And not only before his birth, at his birth, but the angel also appeared <laughs> during the childhood of the Lord Jesus. And not only at the childhood of the Jesus, but also during the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that during his childhood, Herod wanted to kill Jesus. Right? And that's why the angel also appeared and began to tell them that they need to go to Egypt. And this is the account. When King Herod heard he was disturbed and on Jerusalem with him, when he had come together all the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. Why King Herod was puzzled about that? Because he's worried of his throne. He worried of his power. He worried that his kingdom will be taken over by the newborn king. So he pretend that he wants to worship the newborn king as well. But he has a different intention. However, in, in that situation, when we know that the prophecy said in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And we know from the story, so Herod called the Magi, or the wise men secretly, and asked about the whereabout of Jesus, where he was going to be born. And in that, in that particular case, and we see that the angel appeared to them and began to tell them that when they found Jesus, the wise men do not need to go back to King Herod anymore. But they look for another way in order to go back to the east or their homeland. And not only that, when they, when they left, but also the angel once again also began to appear to even Joseph and Mary once again. You see that in verse Matthew chapter 2 from verse 11 and 12. The angel appeared and talked to the Magi, Magi, Magi or the wise men that they three in a dream that not go back to Herod, but they return to their country by another road. And then we begin to see that the angel also appeared to Joseph and Mary and tell them that they need to go somewhere. In verse number 13 of Matthew chapter 2. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. The angel, after Jesus was born, and as Jesus was growing up, the angel appeared not only one time, but many times. And this is one of the times that they need to go to Egypt. But also another time, the angel also come to them after the, the death of Herod. An angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. This is the second time that we see that during Jesus was still an infant, the angel appeared. And we also see about the third time that when Joseph was also afraid. And then the angel once again warned them in a dream so that he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And this is also begin to fulfill the 
prophecy that had been spoken hundred years ago. And he went and lived there in a town called Nazareth. So was confused what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazareth. Now those are some of the short account that we are going to see. But at the same time that we see that when Jesus appeared in the temple, when he's growing up, and then there we begin to see some of the prophets begin to see, say something. Okay? And this is one of the accounts where we see a prophet begin to speak to the Lord Jesus and the prophet as well. Now there was a man in Luke chapter 2 from verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was a righteous and devout and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the lost Messiah. And moved by the Spirit he went into the temple court and when the parent brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the Lord required. This is what Simeon began to say. Simeon took Jesus into his arm and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles. And the glory of your people, Israel, the child's father and mother marvel at what was said about him. So we see that in many cases that we begin to say, God begin to reveal, the angel begin to appear. And there was also another person. There was also a prophet called Anna, the daughter of Peniel, the child of Asher. And she was very old and she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. And then was a widow until she was 84 years old. And this is, she began to speak when she saw the Lord Jesus Christ. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them to Joseph and Mary and, jo and the Lord Jesus, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Now, let me go quickly about this one. There would be some other events where we see that the angel appeared to the Lord Jesus Christ at his death and his resurrection. At his time in the wilderness, at his ascendance to heaven, the angel also appeared. Now, why do I spend too much time to talk, to talk about the appearance or the presence of the angel in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me begin to come with this one. Let us begin to ask, have we ever thought about the significance of the visitor who came to celebrate your birth, your birthday or any event? Just imagine if People who come to celebrate to us, it's just the ordinary friends. Yeah, we're still happy. Imagine if a mayor to come, we are more happy. Now, if President Trump or President Biden came to celebrate with me in my birthday, I will become even more happier, a lot happier. Because the level or the position or the prestige of the visitor who came to visit us will tell about our identity and the blessing that we can have together with that. If not, President Trump or President Biden would not come to us, right? We must be someone. And in the same way, when we talk about the Maki, the wise men, the shepherd, and all the angels, and then later on in Matthew chapter 3, we see that John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit even come down. And in Matthew chapter 4, we see even the devil even came. Even the angel, we know that the angel was created by God. Angel are spirit, but they could appear in human form. We know that angel are God's messenger. We know that angel are the agents of God's wrath. We know that angel serve God and Christian. We know that angel serve as the guardians for every one of us. We know that angel have the great knowledge and the power. We know that the angel have ranks, angel and archangel. Many more things. 
But human being cannot be compared to the angel in terms of power. And this will tell us about the identity of the Lord Jesus. In other words, about the divinity of the Lord Jesus. Only the God of heaven can order and even allow so many powerful supernatural beings in order to appear and announce, proclaim and declare about His birth, about His ministry, about His life, about His death, about His resurrection and His ascending to the heaven, about His ministry and about His promises. Let me ask you, is there anyone in this world that have the angel appear and said, Oh, your son is going to be born. Your daughter is going to be born. No. There are many religious leaders always make up the story. And they said, Oh, the angel appeared to me. The angel told me I have to write down and this and this. But no one can verify that. But the Bible let us know from the history that Jesus appeared and even many people already see the angel. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not only about the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about the grander scale of God's plan for humanity in salvation. It talks about the transcendent power of God over the universe. And only God can allow a virgin to be conceived, to be pregnant, and to give birth. Only God can order all of the angel, and I am praying for all of you today. As we also begin to pray for this Christmas season, let us begin to use one of these reasons, the appearance of the angel, during the time before Jesus was born, during the time he was born, after he was born, during his ministry, as an evidence in order to tell other people about the divinity of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. To tell other people about the plan of God is not by coincidence. Many people say, oh, we just make up the story. No, it's not about making up the story. It's about the plan of God for thousands of years. And throughout the history, that plan has been revealed. And that plan being, begin to, sh more other people begin to see just like the Maki. They can see and they know exactly the time and the place where the Lord Jesus was born. So the important thing is, Jesus came. It's not by coincidence, but He came for you and I in this Christmas season. Amen. And that's why if the angel come, if the Maggi can come, to worship Him. If the wise men came to bow down and to worship Him. If the angel came and worshiped the Lord Jesus. If the shepherd came and worshiped the Lord Jesus. And even, even King Herod wanted to say that I want to come and worship Him. Why don't we come and worship Him during this Christmas season? Don't wait anymore. Many of you have been waiting from Christmas to Christmas. From year to year. But you have never met that king of glory. You have never met the celebrant for Christmas season. You never met the special gift for the, your Christmas season of this year and the years to come. So come to him. Bow down and worship him. Amen. Confess your sin and receive of his forgiveness. And knowing that God is loving, God is kind, God is faithful, and God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Let's just stand up together and we are going to receive the communion at this moment. And that's also the time that you and I begin to reflect also. But this Christmas season, what are the things that you and I can do for the Lord Jesus? Yeah, Pam all the way from heaven to the earth who he came to show his divinity in our life and next week on every occasion before jesus was was born the presence 
of the angel will tell us what are the significant, significant meanings of those events, of each event. So we are going to have the next three sermons on those events and the lessons that we can learn from them. But today, let us begin to recognize and ident identify and knowing that the divinity of the Lord Jesus, He is God, He is in heaven, but He is willing to come in order to seek us and to save us and to deliver us from all of our sins and wickedness. So let us just come and de de dedicate our life into the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to open our heart and receive that gift into our life. And as Christians, let us also begin to pray for those who have not received the Lord Jesus Christ in our family, in our neighborhood, in our office, in our workplace, so that we can pray and we can invite them to come to this Christmas season. Amen. We are going to have a celebration on December 22nd, which is, which is Friday. We'll be celebrating here together. Now, have you received the cup and the bread? Yeah. The Bible said, For I received from the Lord what I also pass it on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night who was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, at the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, Whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body price, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. So whenever we receive the cup and the bread, first of all, we remember what the Lord Jesus had done for our life. Amen. And secondly, we are going to examine ourselves if we have any sins against other people. Thirdly, God reminds you and I that if we receive the cup, we are going to proclaim and declare the death of the Lord Jesus Amen. until the day He comes, about the gospel. And lastly, when we receive the cup and the bread, also begin to think, what are we going to, to do for others, people, just as the Lord Jesus has done for us? Amen. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This bread represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this had been broken. It represents that the body of Jesus was crucified, was beaten, was broken in order to redeem our dead body. And today, we are alive in him because we have been redeemed. We have been bought with a price by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us continue to live in a life of worthy with the call and always protect this body as the temple of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. And we pray that God you're going to remind every one of us that every day that we will examine ourselves, and every day that we are going to pray, every day that we are going to reflect, every day that we are going to follow your will, so that we are not going to fall into temptation. And especially, Father, whatever we talk, whatever we take in, whatever we receive, we always consider that we are the temple of God. And we are not going to let anything that defines the temple of God. We are not going to let anything that is going to make this temple of God to be dirty, to be sinful. But we pray that the blood, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will cover us so that we can be cleansed every day and kept us few in Jesus' name. Let's partake the bread together. Amen. Mm. 
This cup represents the blood of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has been shed for us. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Amen. And this cup represents the blood of Jesus cleansed on our sin. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins. We know that we were the sinners. And it's just by your grace and by your mercy, that you have turned it, turned every one of us into the saint. Lord, as we receive this, this cup, remind every one of us so that we are not going to crucify you again on the cross. Amen. We are not going to let your blood to be shed once again. Amen. But Father, help us so that we can stand firm in faith, so that we can continue to proclaim your gospel. We are going to declare out your name, and we are going to bless the people nearby us through prayer, through sharing of the gospel, through sharing of the material things, through sharing of the blessing that you have given to us. Father, we thank you. We receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's take the cup together.